let's head on down to the floor. You guys are going to need to get yourselves into commentary because we're about to begin. Let's we'll start off, Greg, with the four laps. Four laps, just over four laps. So, you know, you might get some courses where there's two laps, and that would traditionally be a quicker course. But these four laps, that's 16 corners they've got to turn, essentially. So that, that is going to slow you down to a certain extent. Now, what we're seeing here, normally we would expect Lauren and Megan to go out very hot. And 
I'm not sure they are relative to the rest of the field. They're, they're sticking with them early on, at least, uh, which is quite interesting to see. What I'm, what I'm really excited, what I'm looking for, obviously, from the American side of things, you know, we talked a little bit about Chris Roglowski in the pre-show, uh, whether she's going to be able to hold that pace. I, I see her in the front pack there. Uh, it's kind of encouraging to see. Yeah, Chris has got the engine. It remains to be seen what she can do. You know, when, when we get to the sleds, can she push the sleds as well as someone like Lauren and Megan, who are very strong athletes? Uh, and so will she fall behind at that point? Right, and then and then right back there. Let's go one, two, three. Let's talk about it. We've got Lauren Weeks out in front right now. Obviously, we see her set this pace a lot in the states, and uh, obviously here, you know, she's she's kind of doing the same thing. Right, follow her behind by Meg Jacoby. That second place position is really the hunter, right? You, you are you are the person out there, kind of waiting for a mistake, waiting for a slip up, and and just simply riding that slipstream all the way through. You are. Another thing that happens on the four lap course is you're never that far away from someone. So you can never completely get out of sight. So the chasing pack can almost always see you. And I think that I think that probably spurs you on to a certain extent. I think it, 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 when someone's in sight, you can try and keep up with them a little bit more. There's a little bit more incentive. It's not like, oh, that person's gone. I've lost them. Let's, I'm fighting for a second anymore. Yeah, and then here we go. Viola Oblander and Belle McFarland. Uh, let's talk about that really quick. So Viola, obviously a seasoned athlete, someone we know well, introduced in the show before. But Belle McFarland, this is someone I've been watching and I'm very excited about. Again, three races in and exactly where she was in Anaheim only a few weeks ago, chasing the tail of, uh, of, of Meg Jacoby right there in front of her. I call it that toe effect. I've been talking about it kind of all day with you. Um, the toe effect, right? You, you know, we, we talk about it in auto racing, that, that slips stream that you kind of get in right back there it pulled it pulled bell to a 104 time which is incredible i mean obviously she comes in with that cross-country background incredible athlete but that that's something to watch out for today is bell is a fighter and she is ready to go today she is a, she's she's a great runner and she's particularly good on the lunges and the wall balls as well so uh, if she's in the mix towards the end of the race like those stations are particularly strong for her so she's uh she's if, if she's there, like she's in with a shout. I mean, th this is this is impressive. I, I like to see her standing on on the toes of of Lauren Weeks right now as she comes into this uh, what will be the four laps. So again, four and a half laps as we talked about. Uh, again, if you're just following on here, we've got the course setup is slightly different. Uh, we have all the athletes will be taking place fastest athletes in the in the furthest. I guess uh, that would be your the the cameras the cameras left. Uh, 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 played here, but the, the workouts are still the same. We have 1,000 meter on the ski right now, and Bell has kind of taken over. But look at that! There is Lauren Weeks in lane number two, Megan in lane three. One, two, three with the Americans out front right here. And I, I, I got to say, this is let, let's talk about the power on the skier. Power versus efficiency. What do you want? Yeah, it's a it's, it's a very thin line. You don't always get back what you put into the skier. Like oh. oh you don't gain a huge amount. Like if you if you go 10 seconds faster on the skier, like that can like kill you for the rest of the race, and it's only it's only gained you 10 seconds. So uh, you do have to toe the line certainly on this machine to a certain extent. Now one point on Bell, like she's obviously coming in the lead there. I don't think the ski or the road for that matter is is a particularly strong station for her. Um, when I when I asked her recently what her estimated 2k times was, she estimated somewhere between. 10 minutes and 11 minutes and I think that's wrong to be honest but uh, she had no clue it's, it's not a, it's not a particularly strong area for her whereas I think you'll see uh, Lauren and Megan uh, go past her at this station okay yeah copy that and you know so we're, we're, during the race today again as we're kind of showing you out there in uh, on Twitch we're going to be basically broadcasting from this little section area right here where the athletes all their workout stations are right in line so check them out uh, we're also going to be throwing down today uh, our beautiful commentary, our host. <laughs> uh, Lauren will be coming for us with stories from on the floor. Lauren, what do you got for us out there? Yep. We're going to get her mic all squared away, and then we're going to get back into it. Um, a 158 here. I like what I'm seeing so far. Vivian Tafudo, we got Tara Jackson. Look at this. I mean, the Americans are showing up. Let's let's give them some love. And remember, all of y'all out there in Twitch land, we are live, so please feel free to comment Fun. in and uh, let me know what's going on. So, yes, yeah. we're, we're in. We're on 
Right, so you guys were just talking about Belle McFarlane. I actually had a really great conversation with her in the week, and she just used this quote that really resonated. I'm lost in a world of sport, and I didn't know where I belonged. And I think that's exactly what we were trying to say about what Hyrax can bring to people. Prior to the two events that qualified her for World Championships, she'd never done ski erg before, sled work, and she'd only been on a rower as part of a warm-up. You know, she literally graduated as a nurse last week, and now she's on the floor at the World Championships. That's what Hyrox can do to people, Jen. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think she's definitely found a place here. You know, Greg, let's talk about the midfield right now. I mean, we're looking at kind of some live uh, results, and we're just kind of seeing them right down here as they came into the ski erg. Let's talk about this middle ground. You know, we, we see the leaders out here, as you say, they're going to stay on their heels the best they can. We, we expect that at least through probably the sled pull. We're going to see that, that group stay kind of remain tight. Uh, but let's talk about some other athletes in that kind of mid-pack where we're going to see that race. Yeah, sure. So we saw uh, Bell, Lauren and Megan come in uh, as, as the front three. Uh, right behind them, we've got Viola and Linda, so two very established European athletes. Uh, with a lot of experience, they'll know how they want to pace this race. Um, they're relatively strong on this ski as well, so they can climb from here. Uh, and then just behind them is, is Becky Mason, who we talked about, UK athlete, a ton of support in this room. Um, she, she'll, she'll be feeling good with like, she came in seventh, sixth, seventh in, into the ski. Um, again, relatively strong here, so um, it'll be interesting to see how they come out. They'll be, they'll be out here in a minute or two, I would think. Yeah, I think I was, as I was looking on a couple of those screenshots right there, we're getting up to about 800 meters, which means we're going to see the first one, and there it is. Lauren Weeks takes off and heads out. I, I, this is where I got to say we leaned in on power, and Lauren is a powerful athlete. She's been practicing this. She knows this move, and we'll, look at this. I mean, we're talking 50 feet at least, and you called it right there, Bell. Well, maybe that was a tough call for her to, like, jump out in front. Yeah, it might be. Maybe she knew. Maybe she knew that the, the Ergs are a weakness for her and she's got to make it up on the running. So uh, she, she, she might be going hard on the run in this evening and then leave a little energy for the, uh, for the stations. What's great to see is that they're all still together. Lauren, how are you doing out there? What other things we got for you? Well, you guys were talking about Rebecca Mason and the fact that she has all this home support. Her kids, Scarlett and Dominic, are out there, 6 and 10. And she's also racing doubles with Adam Collard tomorrow. I don't know if you know Adam Collard, but he is from Love Island. So she's out there with a bona fide British celebrity tomorrow doing double, du double trouble. That's great. I love it. I love it. Hey, so what so, we have on screen right here, we have uh, a, little tw a little Twitch uh, poll going on. So we want to see who's going to win, who's going to take it. Go ahead and come on in with that. We've got some instructions right there on the screen for you. We're going live. We are. This is what's the beauty of this Twitch uh, platform. We got live results as they're coming in. What do you think? Are they right? It's, it's not conclusive at the moment, is it? It looks like it's split, it's split between Megan and Lauren and then Miriam there as well. Just going back to where we were talking about Bell on the uh, on the skier. Lauren came out of that skier 18 seconds ahead of Bell. So they went in together to that section. So she skied 18 seconds fast, which is fairly significant over 1,000 a, a, a metres. Absolutely. And, you know, we didn't talk about this yet, but with us four laps on, on course right here, we're already seeing Lynn, uh, uh, you know, Lauren Weeks to catch up to Miriam, right? So what is that? What's going to happen to your mental state when you get lapped? For some athletes, I can imagine it would hurt. Miriam, like we talked about earlier, is is amazing at the second half of the race on the station. She'll know that her row, her lunges, her wall balls, she can gain a huge amount of time against even Lauren and even Megan in that last section of the race. So as long as she's still in touch, I don't think she'll be too bothered. Now, obviously, she'd rather not be lapped by this point um, because the ski is a relatively strong station for her as well. But on a four lap course, if they're doing this in four minute runs, that's, that's, that's a minute, probably less than a minute for each lap. So she'll know as long as she, you know, as long as she doesn't get lapped again, then she's still in with a shout. Well, it's looking like it's pulling ahead here for Meg Jacoby as the uh, the results keep, keep streaming in. But remember, you know, what just dawned on me when we were talking about this right now is these athletes, you know, a lot of them have raced their regional races, their normal races in our schedule. 
a lot less pressure. You know, there's a lot less pressure when you show up on a weekend, you go out, and even for Meg, when she's, in, you know, kind of taking a weekend for herself, goes to Anaheim, breaks the world record, casual. These athletes have been interviewed to interview. They've been in the spotlight, picture sessions. They've been doing a lot of things. Obviously, they're sleeping in a hotel, not their own bed. I mean, this is, a, 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 you know, you're really going to see this kind of catch up. And, and as you see at Lauren Weeks right now, the consummate professional is just putting on a show. Uh, she's she's lapping Ancha Hardis there, who is one of the stronger runners in the field. Like mm. there, she, she qualified, she's 15th ranked by time, essentially. But in terms of just pure running, Lauren is lapping one of the best runners in the field, which is pretty amazing this early on, to be honest. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting when we see some of these split times kind of come in so here. Lauren's coming yeah, in. Yeah, as Lauren comes into the sled, so we're going to pull over to that shot. That's going to be fun to watch where, where these athletes either clump up, get you know, are able to kind of see each other on their passing laps, or they break right away. So we'll pause on the... Uh, on the pole for a minute as we join Lauren Weeks over on the sled and it's not she's not slowing down she's moving that well she's moving that well sometimes you need to a lot of athletes would pause halfway and that can sometimes be sensible to, to save your legs but she's obviously feeling strong as she's gone done that leg from absolutely and you know what's you know what's so interesting is this is where Meg Jacoby really wants to put Lauren she wants to put Lauren out in front of her she wants to chase her down and be hungry for it I mean this is what makes Meg such a you know contender for this world champion title is because she wants to hunt you down she wants to beat you you know I mean that that's her mo so yeah I think it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see whether Lauren kind of stays out in front or if Meg just hunts her right here Megan's got a powerlifting background as well, so she's certainly a very strong athlete, as is Lauren, to be fair. But, you know, you, you, she, they all want to be separating uh, themselves from the pack to a certain extent with this strength-based exercise. And for all of you watching out there right now, remember, this is the one where your legs are a little bit smoked coming out of this one, you know? Uh, as you come out of that sled, you see Linda Meyer right here adopting that straight arm technique. Let's dive into that really quick. I mean, you're seeing the top two ladies bent arms hugging that center pylon but you got and linda. you see linda, linda ah. mixing it up there as well which you know to save the arms it hits the legs a little bit differently there's a lot to be said for mixing up the technique and yeah make jacoby really taking it down not even taking that pause as lauren kind of takes a break right there before that turnaround point as we take a peek at tara jackson also in the hunt right here We'll have to see the split times, but the impression I'm getting is these sleds aren't moving particularly easy. For uh, I've seen I've seen Megan move a sled easier than this in the past. That that's right, that's right. And and uh, you know the the one thing we can talk about that isn't in the shot, which is the third place position. As we look at Lalonja Greenlee, that's split in the floor, y'all. So we have just so you can kind of at home kind of picture what's happening right here. That far side of the screen, we have the top six, seven lanes and then on the bottom side that's your bottom half of the field so always those faster athletes will be that's on the that's top of your screen. That's Lauren out. Lauren is out and here goes Meg Jacoby. And I think that I don't think that was correct on uh, from our commentator on the floor. I think Lauren is out in front. Megan is in the second position. I'm not. I'm not sure. We need to check that. The leaderboard showing Bell came out first, so we might have missed Bell leaving the sled push. Ah, we may have, huh? Well, that would be a, a certainly a great change of of pace right there. I mean, we we saw. I've seen her. I, I we seen Bell McFarland really jump on the, on the uh, on the weights heavily and keep up with uh, Meg Jacoby at the other events in in uh, Fort Worth and in Anaheim so I wouldn't put it past her but really it's coming down to Lauren's pace I, I see this every single race where Lauren's pace over and over again at and no matter what the station is no matter what the stimulus was she is just raising the bar each time allowing those athletes to just pull you know fall further and further behind her so Megan was out 19, uh, 16 seconds behind Lauren there. 
which is quite significant at this stage of the race. She should be wanting to be at least level with her at this point. Right. Now, they're both strong for the rest of the race. Uh, remains to be seen whether someone's gone out too hot, obviously. Uh, but this there's quite a gap that's opening up already. Yeah, and I, I, what are you expecting on the sled pull station? I mean, I, this is uh, another one where they're fairly evenly matched. Both have the upper body strength and the technique to really get that thing done. They are, yeah. They're, they're both very evenly matched. In terms of pure strength numbers, I think Lauren's got a, a very impressive deadlift. So from that perspective, if that translates over to a sled pull, then you might expect to see Lauren um, beat Megan in that, in that station. But to be honest, it is very close between the two of them there. That's right. And so we've got Vivian Tefudo in the mix as well as Viola Overlander kind of holding that center stage, right? You have. And to go back to what we were talking about earlier, America versus Europe, at the moment, the front four are all Americans. <laughs> That's right. And uh, Lauren, you talked to Viv Vivian, or uh, excuse me, Viola Overlander. Yes, I did. And actually, it was a really open and interesting conversation. She said that at the start of 2022, she felt that her mental strength really faltered. And actually, she turned to motivational books to try and help find her love for racing again and get her season back on track. And guess what? She's at the European, sorry, she's at the World Championships. That's right, she is. I mean, I, you know, I've watched her over the years. I mean, she can just rise to the challenge. She's a multidiscipline athlete, comes in with a gymnastics background. Really interesting about the self-help books. I, 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 I think that, I don't know if that's gonna help you get to the top of the podium, but it certainly is gonna help you yeah. if you don't, <laughs> I guess. And look at this, just, I mean, the same pace that she took off at. What I'm interested in exploring is, is this Meg's stride length? Is that is that really gonna be what she settles in on? I thought she, you know, could come out a little bit hotter. I heard, I heard her talking the other day and she was saying she's going to hit the runs really hard as well. She, she, she's comfortable with running. She's doing 50, 60 miles a week. Uh, she's been a runner all her life. Uh, she was intended to hit these hard. So it's interesting. It's interesting to see that she is far behind. Well, not far behind, but a, a, a decent gap behind already. And give it up for our uh, on, on staff folks on the floor right now doing that quick changeover from the sled push to the sled pull. Remember, as you're watching at home, these athletes are going to be staying in the same lanes all the way through this, this small area. We've got over 25 or 5,000 people on, on hand today right here in Manchester, England, celebrating the High Rocks World Championships. I mean, just an incredible place to host a race, right, Greg? It's amazing. This, uh, this, this building especially... Some, some, some buildings in High Rocks are more like convention centres, they haven't got the, the character, but this, this one has, like, it's, it's, it's amazing, it's, it's much more compact as well than some venues, so the atmosphere that you get is, uh, is, is different class. That's right, okay, as we watch Lauren Weeks right here, clearly in the front now, so we can see that she is in lane number one. The orange marks on the floor are where the athletes have to stay. So they are going to keep their feet inside the box, walk themselves down, minding that rope. This is really an interesting one for me. Bell, look at this, taking that second place spot. We were misguided on our, on our monitors here. Bell was making that move. This is truly incredible, passing Meg Jacoby. This is what we're talking about. This is what we knew kind of was happening, right? World records out the window, right? These athletes are racing today. Like, they are racing these athletes today. So Bell, Bell came into the station 11 seconds off of Lauren. Uh, Megan's 22 seconds behind Lauren. And then it's Vivian Tafuto, 37 seconds off. But Lauren's moving this sled really, really well. I think she'll be opening the gap up against some of these girls with, with that first pull, at least. Excellent. And then we're looking down the line. It, it is one through four right there. Vivian Tafuto. Let's talk about that really quick. I mean, Vivian is showed up. I mean, she, you know, was kind of straddling one of those lower tiers on the Elite 15 and then really rose up towards the end of the season. I'm excited to see what she can do here. Yeah. One, one thing I've seen with Vivian is the trajectory that she's on. She is consistently improving her times across the season. Every race seems to be a PB. So she's, uh, she's moving in the right direction. That's obviously what you want to see and feel as an athlete. Like That's going to give you a huge amount of confidence as you come into this sort of race. Yep, exactly. Lauren, you, you were caught up with Vivian 
Do you know what's crazy? We're seeing this performance from Vivian. She's never been to Europe before. So she's racing like this, having had no idea what the jet lag and the travel was going to have in terms of impact on her body. And look at her go. Yeah, it's really incredible. I, she had a, a, a very rough time, actually. She tried to get a, a, a little self-care with a little massage action and then ended up being a terrible experience for her. We were caught up about that this morning at breakfast. Um, but now she's back on the course. She's holding strong at that fourth base position. Um, we've gotten some comments coming in. Uh, leaderboards, uh, leaderboard, all the things can be updated live on HyRox.com. So if you want to follow along, always head over to that website. We also have, of course, all of our schedule, or some of our schedule for the next season coming up pretty soon. So you guys can always go on there, check out your next race. We'll be dropping some knowledge today. I love it. And remember, guys, remember to comment in. Look at this crowd as they cheer on our elite women. Those are the best athletes in their age groups racing tomorrow. We've got a full day of racing. In fact, you're racing tomorrow. I'm racing tomorrow, yeah. 5.40 five start time for me tomorrow. So I've got a lot of waiting around, a lot of nervous energy for the whole day. <laughs> try not to pace around too much. Try not to do 20,000 steps before I race. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. That, that's cool. All right, here we go. Lauren Weeks on the last pole, doing a great job of just holding it tough. And what, what's great, Lauren is a new mom, and she trains just as hard today as she did before, incorporates her family. Anthony, if you're out there watching, listening, wish you were here. It is a family affair. I, I, you know what, I really love that, actually. Let's, let's talk about family for a second, because I think what Christian and Mo were saying right there at the end of their welcome speech was, was right on. This is a sport. This is a lifestyle, but this is a family more than anything. If you're watching this today, you're part of this thing. You, we, we, this is a growing sport. We have, we're nowhere near even re reaching the adolescent stages of High Rocks. And you know, we talked a little bit about this in the pre-show about where we think this sport's gonna go. Look, just look around, just look around. 5,000 people here today, 2,400 2, athletes racing here, and, and just growth to come. So. Lauren Weeks out the door. There's Meg Jacoby, takes over that sec second place spot. And then, you know, uh, in, in looking at this right now, if you're at home, this is Belle just being Belle. I, I think, I really think this is gonna be a, a grinder for her just because that weight is so heavy compared to her body weight. And I, I think it's, it's, it's showing right there as we saw Viola Overlander, Vivian Tafudo. This and this is what I was talking about. This middle of the pack race. Yeah. Tell me about. It. Well, they, they, just going back to what you were saying about Bell. I think it's worth acknowledging she's dropped some time there on that sled pull, but she's left the sled pull. She's not too far behind, and she's done probably three of. We've done four stations. She's done. Uh, sorry, we've done three stations. They're three of her least strong stations. You know, she's she's still got her best ones to come. So the fact she's still in it at this point is. Uh, must be hugely encouraging for us. Uh, yeah, well, absolutely. Again, three races in. Like this is this is pretty cool. As we look at our our last year 2022's world champion, Chris Wiglowski, hanging out in that second stage right here. She crosses the line out of the door on her run, and she's moving. Middle of the pack is where we are. We've got Vivian Tafudo, Viola Overlander chasing down Bell McFarland. Meg Jacoby, Lauren Weeks. Is so this, this kind of where we thought we were going to be? This is, I'll tell you what, this is closer than I thought it would be at this point. So between Lauren Weeks uh, in first and Becky Mason in eighth, there's just one minute and ten seconds separating those eight athletes. So this is really, really, really close. Sometimes the sleds can be a bit of a, a separator in the race. You know, some, some just really struggle um, and some like excel at that. But there's eight women within one minute and ten seconds of each other, which is... Uh, it's pretty exciting. This is, and I'm, I'm, I am excited about this. I mean, we have Vivian Tafudo, who again, rising up in the latter part of the season is really showing that that pay, that you know, that work that she's putting in is paying off. Very exciting about this. We were talking a moment ago about the uh, about family and, and Lauren Weeks. I think it's worth acknowledging for people that aren't aware is that. She had, she had a baby only 10 months ago. Um, last year she competed at the World Championships in Las Vegas while she was seven months pregnant and, and finished ninth. Uh, I think it's one of the most like, amazing sporting achievements ever. And the fact that she, she's here and 
like dominating this race 10 months after having a baby is, is incredible really. Yeah, no, you're, you're exactly right. And just putting on a clinic right now, that gap, I mean, we're talking, uh, what would you say, 30 meters at least on that, huh? Yeah, I think so. Well, welcome in if you haven't, uh, if you're just joining us now, we are live right here on Twitch. I'm E-Rock. I'm with my man from Rock's Life. We got Greg Williams and, of course, our beautiful host, Lauren, over here. She's joining us from on the field. Miriam Von Roar takes a fall. How's she looking compared to, I mean, this is a woman that we, you had particularly in your sights today. How do, how do you think she's faring? I think she's further behind than I might have expected at this stage, to be honest. She's, like I said, she's uh, a relatively strong athlete on the stations. Um, she's one of the stronger athletes in terms of strength, in terms of squat uh, ability, deadlift ability in this field. And the fact, uh, uh, looks like she's struggling. Um, she, she just stopped there. She's running again, but yeah, she's she's further behind at this point than than I might have expected um, after the sleds. I mean, let's mind you, she, Miriam Von Roar just finished the sled pull. Lauren Weeks is just coming in now. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that, th that's a big gap. That, that that is a massive gap. I mean, and and you know what's what's interesting too is we talked a bit about the four laps in the beginning of the show. Doesn't really seem to be fade. I'd love to get into the splits, but we can, uh, we'll get to those stats here in just a second. Coming into, yeah, uh, a few of the comments I'm looking through. Yep, uh, so we have, just for all of you out there in Twitch land, yes, a million percent head over. We're having, uh, obviously you guys are overloading our website right now, so we're, uh, we're, we're having some leaderboard uh, issues, but definitely pop in and check it out. We, we're going to keep you going. We're going to keep you live right here as we look at Lauren Weeks. And the gap between her and Meg Jacoby is now shortened up considerably. Is this where Meg takes off? Meg, Megan has closed, some, uh, closed the gap on that on that last run, especially, I think. So she's obviously feeling reasonably strong, coming off those sleds to, to the runs after the two after the two sleds can 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 be tough if you've pushed too hard. And the fact that she's clawed back some space on Lauren um, will be encouraging for her. She's obviously feeling pretty good. And these burpees are, are nasty as well if you're struggling. They're, they're both moving pretty well through these. So um, they're in good shape at the moment. That's right. We put those marks on the floor for a reason. We want to make sure that there are no discrepancies today. Um, again, we have, uh, you know, in the, in the many things that's contested in the high rock sphere, one of those things is obviously the hand placement on the burpees. We don't want you falling into it, jumping into it. We want you to simply put your hands straight on the ground. So this is get these lines on the, on the carpet are giving these judges um, and those of you at home and those here, uh, the 5,000 plus here on, on site here in Manchester, a good uh, idea of where those hands are at in relation to their feet. No matter what, though, you're watching all of these athletes quick off the floor. How much does that help? It, it helps a lot. You, the, because you're over 80 meters, you've probably got to do maybe 50 broad jumps here. So if you can like, just save yourself a slight second by not standing up and wasting energy and jumping low and then gaining that extra little um, inch or two with every jump, it, over, over the space of this 80 meters, it can add up to quite a lot. Look at this right here. Lauren just turned right around, and there's Meg Jacoby. She looks like she kind of spent, she, she overextended herself maybe a little bit on that. But what's going to be interesting, Greg, is when we watch both of these athletes right here, and those of you at home, remember, we had a 50-meter-ish gap coming into this, and now Meg has closed it up. But is this, this is going to be really telling, really, where Lauren may just, like, this might just show where she her run is just so much stronger than Meg's today. But we'll see. They're, they're very, very close at this point. And again, can't count out Vivian Tafuno. What is this? God. This is the point in the race as well. For most people, where it gets really hard. Like you, you could, you could uh, conserve your energy to a certain extent up to the uh, up to the broad jumps, but then you're like midway into the race. Like anyone's going to find 80 meters of burpee broad jumps hard. Uh, it gets it gets deep from here on in. Really, they, they're going to be they're going to be struggling. You can be hanging on. For, for the best part of the next half hour, you know? So we got prize money here, Greg. So let's talk about this. We've got, uh, you know, this isn't just uh, any old race, right? Uh -huh. This is a, a big prize purse, big things going down. Let's walk through that. Okay, yeah, yeah. So first place is $19,000 up for grabs. 
Um, but prize money goes down to eighth place. So in, in, in second for second place is nine thousand dollars. So ten thousand dollar difference between first and second. Um, third is four thousand five hundred dollars. Fourth three thousand. Fifth two thousand five hundred. Sixth two thousand. Seventh. 1500 and eight is one thousand dollars so a lot of prize money on the table here big prize money that's what it's all about here at the high rocks world championships 2023 in manchester england i mean you can see this right here if you're at home watching right now which if you're listening to us i guess you are uh, <laughs> look at this building that we're in right here right in the heart of manchester such a beautiful old train station converted into the playground of the fittest and the fastest in the world for the High Rocks World Championships. One point to make on the, on the broad jumps is on, in these elite races, because we're in the grid, so to speak, where all the, all the exercise, all the stations are essentially in the same area, um, you can find that the, the time on the broad jumps might be much longer than it would be in, in a, a normal event, if you like, because, because of the amount of turning around that yep. they've got to do. You get to the end of the lane, you've got to turn around, go again. And that, that takes time and energy to do that, whereas in some other events you might go to, there might be just 40 metres up, 40 metres back, and just one turn around. So that can, that, if you're comparing the times here against times for another event, it can be much longer in this, in this sort of event. That's right. Yeah, and so, you know, again, that's why we, we want to preface this race today with just saying, like, let's let's throw the idea of these world record times out the window. Let's let's save those for a regional championships or even your normally scheduled races. These athletes are here to battle with each other. I mean, that, that's what this is all about. This is a different stage. We, I mean, this is funny because it's coming on the back of us talking about consistency in courses, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me give you uh, let me give you some stats while I've, I've, I've while the while the computer's working. So uh, Lauren came out of those broad jumps in first place. Megan is only five seconds behind her. Uh, Bell McFarland 53 seconds behind, and then Vivian Tafuto one and a half minutes. Uh, and then you got Becky Mason, the UK athlete, 136 behind Lauren, um, only six seconds behind Vivian. So it's still very close in there. In terms of running splits. Uh, Lauren's running around, uh, so first run she went three and a half minutes, I think that was a slightly shorter than a kilometre there, and then run two was 3.49, run three, 4.13, run four, 4.05, so yeah, just over four minute pace at the moment. So we're getting a uh, Jacob 8191 says after the burpees the wads get easier, easier, what do you think about that? Well, after the burpees, you've got the row coming up. So this is the one point in the race where you sit down. So for some, that can feel nice. You know, you, you, you sort of regroup to a certain extent. And obviously, you can't let up too much. Um, but it, 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 there's a different feel to the rowing station than, than, than there is to, to some of the others. And then, yeah, you know, there's, there's a valid point because after that, you've got uh, farmer's carries, which isn't that taxing on the legs. Uh, obviously, it can be on the grip, but it's a relatively quick station. Um, but then it gets pretty tough. The, you know, lunges and wall balls, no one's finding them too easy. That's right, that's right. And uh, there was a question coming in around the laps, so, uh, or the, uh, how many times are they, they're doing these? Uh, you know, the greatest thing about High Rocks is that the measured floor lengths for farmer carry, for burpees, for whatever it might be, the sleds, for instance, everything is marked out there. What you're watching these athletes do right now on the burpees, for instance, is down and back twice. That gives them that full 80 meters. So they're, oh man, there we go. Lauren Weeks already back into the rock zone for the row. So it's easy as so you guys are watching out there in Twitch. These athletes are going to be going down and back. Remember, they're going to be going out they're the right behind you, right, uh, Meg Jacoby, right there. You have the out arch. Just know that's the direction that they're going to always go. So when you see the farmer carry happen and the lunges, they're going to finish on that end of the floor. So there's just seven seconds in this at the moment. Megan came in seven seconds behind Lauren into the row. So this is about efficiency right here. I've been coaching uh, rowing for many years, and you know this is. Uh, this is something I think, you know, as a high rocks athlete and, and coach, we, we, we try to work on this stuff, you know, because it, you, you're, you have an opportunity right here, as you say. And, and Dylan Scott says it's great too, right? Dylan Scott always talks about how it's, it's a wonderful time because you can actually eat something right there. You're going to be sitting down for a couple minutes. 
but it's really about that efficiency at this point. Uh, this is a great shot right here. Lauren, 157, standard pace right here. We, we Actually, standard. Standard for a normal workout, maybe. Lauren's doing this after finishing already uh, four other workouts for the runs, so, or five other runs at this point. Yeah, so, the, 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 the feeling that you get when you get to the rower at this stage in the race compared to when you get on a row of pressure at the gym is, is, is a world of difference. That's right, that's right. But it doesn't seem to be phasing him too much. And you, you, she, as you see, Lauren's head is up, her chest is up. She's rocking right there in that 29. I always talk, talk to these athletes about that too. That 28 to 32 strokes per minute kind of leaves you in that sweet spot. Also, that physiological re, uh, rest that you get essentially when you're coming back to the catch. Get that breath out, organize yourself, get ready to push down to those heels and get that next pull. You talked about co uh, coaching rowing technique. Do you feel like in, in a race like this, you want to try and conserve the legs a little bit more then, and use more arms so like the technique is less perfect than, than it otherwise might be? Um, yes and no. So I will, uh, I obviously, I, when I'm coaching these athletes on this sub, uh, right, so we can ad adapt more of that deadlifty style, like a little bit straighter leg, hinging at the hips a little bit more, driving through the arms at the end right there kind of less of the bend on the knees, let, letting your heels stay down. And then like what you're seeing Lauren do right here, right? Heels are coming up, getting all the way as close to the catch as possible. But nonetheless, if you watch that chain, that's what I always you know, use as that indicator of, of what how efficient an athlete is. I want that chain to stay as straight and as true as possible, catching you right there at the sternum level, just like you see Meg Jacoby kind of hitting herself right there in the chest. 158, 157, just like Lauren Weeks. No big gain here, Greg, on this station, that's for sure. No, you, you wouldn't expect a huge gain between, uh, certainly between those top two athletes on the row. Uh, again, it's like the ski, like we were talking about earlier, where you have to toe the line a little bit to, to try and gain 10 seconds and push yourself really hard uh, and then get off and find like you've absolutely ruined yourself can, can be a mistake. So you do have to... Um, you do have to play it carefully on the, on the road. That's right. And, and yes, uh, for all of you out there, I'm watching some of these uh, come in. Some of these great comments. Yeah, you are right. Uh, yes, Lauren Weeks was pregnant last year at the World Championships, as Greg kind of mentioned. Yeah, it, she's just an incredible consummate uh, a professional. And again, so many more races that make Jacoby right here, as we see in second place. But look at that, it's straight away, we are looking at uh, Lauren only having a gap of maybe 20, 30 meters. Yeah, maybe 20 meters at this point on Meg. So it's going to be a foot race. And this again, remember, for all of you out there, this gets me excited. This is where uh, Meg wants to be. She wants to hunt you down. And so watch this as we come into our last pull. Who lets it coast? Who gets off first? We're gonna hear the crowd get a little wild, because here we go. Lauren Weeks off first. Meg Jacoby stride. Ooh, this is interesting. Look at her stride. I, she, and this is what we see from Lauren Weeks usually is that push. She knows Meg is on her. Yeah. Another thing she'll know, we've got farmer's carries next. Now, if, the, if Lauren has got one weak station in this race, it's the farmer's carry. Now, Megan can, can gain a few seconds in this, so she'll be conscious of that. She'll be well aware of that. Um, that that, that Megan can claw it back on that next station alone. Yeah, I, I, I do agree. I do agree. I also think that Lauren is right now just edging her way further and further as, on each run because it seems to me, I, I, let's let's see how those splits come in, but look at this right here. That gap is opened back up. Can you believe this right here? We've got at least 20 meters. I, I can't really tell on the screen, but we're looking at Lauren pulling away from Meg. If we just look at running splits coming up to this point, there's, there's barely anything that is separating these top two. So uh, Lauren did a 4.12 on, on the fifth run. Megan did a 4.38. The run before was 4.05 versus 4.04. So there's nothing separating them run-wise at, at that stage of the race. That's right. We just looked down there in the bottom pack of the thing. And we see uh, someone that we saw thought would be in the higher in the standing, which is Alondra Greenlee. Yeah, yeah, so Alandra's finished fourth in the Euros, fourth in the North American Championships, fourth in Vegas last year. Um, I, I think... probably had her for fourth today. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. definitely. Lauren, did you catch up? Yeah, we did, and she actually told me that because she's had such a, a varied competition schedule that hasn't 
solely been focused on high rocks. She was relying on her general training coming into this race, so it's been far less specific than perhaps some of her competitors. Um, her general fitness obviously is pretty phenomenal, but perhaps that's what we're seeing play out on the floor. That's, yeah, I mean, so much goes into this training for these races, and it, again, if, if the one thing's off, it can catch you. Just like we're watching it right here, last year's world champion, Chris Rogalowski, still on the rower as Lauren Weeks can see the next station, the Farmer Carry station, but who's right on her tail, and the none other than Meg Jacoby. She's watching her, she's seeing her heels. We're watching this race get closer and closer as we head into workout number five. Any big tips right here, Greg? I mean, you know, you talked about, you know, Lawrence maybe deficiency here, maybe she's not super strong at this. What do you, how do you coach in your folks up on this? I, 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 I'm curious. On the farmer's carriage? Yeah. He's, uh, I, it, it, there's, there's a number of factors that you can do. You could go super, super heavy. So they're going to be lifting 24 kilogram kettlebells. Now, for, for a portion of the training, you might want to go super heavy with that. Go beyond that and just build up your strength in that area. And then other times, you, you want to build up the distance. So they've got to cover 200 meters with, with, with those kettlebells. So you want to be also build up the endurance in the arms to be able to hold on. Now, some of it is there's, there's a genetic aspect. There's, there's what you've done historically. Like some, We see some OCR competitors come in here. They've got the grip strength and they like really excel at this station. Um, Whereas others, like, it needs a lot more work. It is something that you can train relatively close to the event without uh, overly fatiguing yourself. Um, so even in the weeks leading up to this, you can you can build up your grip strength fairly significantly. So you got a lot of stats right there in front of you on that computer. What are we looking at? What do, what are you what are you keying in on here? So I'm just looking at in. Um, the last time that they were on the grid, so the, the grid like we talked about in, in, in Mass Street and Chicago, how did they perform on the farmers' carries? And we can see that um, in Mass Street at the European Championships, Lauren did 217 on those farmers' carries, whereas Megan did 203. So she gained 14 seconds on this relatively simple station. Um, and Megan will know that, you know. I, I, I think the, the fact that she can still see Lauren at this point, I think. Um, will be encouraging to us. She'll, she'll know that she could probably reel Lauren in here to a certain extent. All right, so there you go. We have Lauren Weeks and Meg Jacoby battling it out right now. A quicker transition time for Meg as she handles those kettlebells with ease. And there you go. It's and it, we're, Let's go back to this right here. So those of you at home, this isn't like your normal race, right? We are turning literally 180 degrees and moving down the lane back and forth again as Lauren looks like she's picking up the pace right here on the on the kettlebell farmer carry. She's, she's moving well at the moment, but yeah, like, like you said, there's, there's so many turns. I, I think they're 20 meter lengths that they're covering here, so they've got to do 200 meters to 10 lengths to 10 turns where you might not get that on a normal event. And it, that, that tests your grip strength. Like, for, for some ladies are going to have to put that down. If you, they might be out, in a normal event, if they're doing that in, say, 145, uh, they might be able to hold on that long, but if that suddenly becomes 205, then you need to put that down. Uh, I, I, yeah, I agree. And look at, watch this right here. And you know what the other corners do is they give your mind that opportunity to turn, to maybe say, okay, put them down for just a second, pick them back up, turn around, do that thing. But that, you know, obviously we know in a race like this, this, this gap, which it looks like Lauren is holding, you know, it can close up rather quickly if you if you do it. And you look at Lauren, she's moved down right there. We can see this on the camera. Her fingertips are now on those kettlebells. So much of this, if you've done this in your gym or at home, you know that once they're down in those fingertips, man, it is it is next level. Oh my gosh, we looks like we have a an athlete, Miriam Von Rohr. What do you think just happened? Well, it looked, we, we said she was struggling. Now, it's, just, it's sad to say because she was certainly in contention for third place, I think. But, but yeah, we, we saw earlier that she, she she looked like she might have been injured, so she's obviously pulled out of this point. And this is incredible. You hear the crowd going a little bit louder right now, Greg, as Lauren Weeks does not put the kettlebells down. And Megan Jacoby, that's two drops for her as she comes across and finishes it out. She's out. 
Exactly. Greg, what does this mean? Two set downs for her. That's, I mean, I'm getting chills just thinking about this right now. It does, and, and, and it means that you can't always look at the past data to, 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 to understand how someone's going to perform in these stations. Lauren moved really, really well on that. And the, the best that she's performed this season on those farmers goes without a doubt. And yeah. Like I said, Megan, Megan would have expected Lauren to, 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 to slow down there. She'd expected her to catch up, and, and she didn't. And the other thing she's going to know, if if she performs like she has in the past, that Lauren can go unbroken on the wall balls. So so now there's only two stations left. One is wall balls, one where Lauren is possibly going to go unbroken. So there's not a huge amount of time left in this race to catch her. Definitely not. So we're pulling back out here right now, looking at that third place, Bell McFarland. Still holding it tough against Vivian Tefudo. We got a one, two, three, four American race right here with Rebecca Mason. This was your hometown pick. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's doing really well. I, I interviewed Rebecca um, a couple of weeks ago and she said, you know, she was realistic about her chances. She was re realistic about the, the, the top two in this field. And she said to me that she finished 10th in, in the European Championships and she'd be happy with a top 10 finish this year. So um, she's fifth at this point in time. I think she'll be delighted with that she's doing. Yeah, that's exactly right. As we watch right here, Viola Overlander adopting that shrunk shoulder technique. And turning around. And I gotta say, I mean, looking at looking at uh, Viola right now, she she said it this morning at breakfast. She's had potentially COVID again. I mean, she's not been healthy. I give it to her right now to be in, still in this position, holding strong against these field of strong, strong women. And this this is the point point in a race where you're struggling so much. You know, you're what you 45 minutes in. If you haven't been at full health in recent months, even if you've come into the race and you feel okay. This is where it starts to show, you know, if you've not had a really great training block behind you, um, it's when you start to struggle like this, the, 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 it's the, you know, the, it shows up in your times eventually. Definitely, definitely. Sweat. Let's talk about that really quickly here. I live in Colorado. It is dry. We don't sweat that much. Uh, but oh, here in Manchester, it is, I mean, I worked out the past couple of days. You get wet here, man. The humidity is high. Yeah. Uh, definitely, we haven't had rain, but I, I certainly can see right now on these grip strength element, these farmer carries, these athletes are definitely needing the chalk. Yeah, and I, I raced in this building back in January. It was a colder day. Uh, we were one of the first, uh, we were the first wave off. So it, was, it wasn't as warm as a normal high rocks can be. Tonight, that, that's a different story. You know, it, it's been a warm day. We've got thousands of people in the building. Um, the heat is a, is a massive factor in high rocks. Yeah, oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. As we see, and I, we have to check our split times right here, but it looks like we had Lauren Weeks. So Lauren Weeks. I think we I think we had her lapping uh, Bell right there. So so just gaining kind of a bit of, a bit of distance on Bell from that third place position, opening the door up for Vivian to maybe kind of close the gap a little bit, take over that third place spot. Either way. I just have to say again, for a, a, someone so new to this sport like Bell is, to be hanging at the top of the field is truly impressive. I, I, you know, I talked about at the beginning of the race, right? We talked about the toe factor, right? Maybe she wasn't getting towed at all. Maybe she was just running her own damn race. Yeah. I think that might be the thing. So let me give you some, uh, let me give you some time. So coming out of that farmer's carry, we had Lauren Weeks in first, Megan in second, 20 seconds behind. Um, Bell McFarlane was in third, one minute and 45. Vivian Tafuto, uh, 159 behind Lauren. There we go, Lauren Weeks right now. Dominant. This is not a place where she is ever going to slow down. She knows the gap. She's been, you, and you can see her too. I was watching as she kind of crosses around that back, that front side by the bleachers, where she was looking into the crowd, kind of like checking around to see where everybody else is looking to see. You know, Meg was right behind her or not. I think she knows what's up as, as Meg just now enters the floor. Lauren, one length already in. Incredible. As we look at the crowd out here right now, again, we are coming to you live, if you're just joining us, from the High Rocks World Championships 2023 in Manchester, England. I'm E-Rock. It's my man from Rock's Life. Greg Williams. Greg Williams. <laughs> one, one point here you can tell 
It's, it's one of them stations where you can tell how someone's feeling. They, both of these ladies are stepping through at the moment. They're not taking that little pause uh, on, on each step. So they're, they're, they're going through. They're obviously feeling pretty good. So, Lauren, we've been, uh, we've been kind of talking a lot up here about the action. What's happening on the floor? Well, I went down to speak to Miriam Van Roor, who has just withdrawn from the race. And obviously, she was naturally distraught. She has piled her entire year into competing here. She sacrificed the CrossFit Open, and she's been working really hard, specifically on her weaknesses. But just the same back issue that keeps flaring up. She had it about a month ago at DECA. She had to withdraw from there as well, and it's just not getting better. So ah. bless her. She, she's opting out for the rest of the race, and, and she wishes all the girls well. Ah, it's too bad. I, you know, these nagging injuries that pop up, and for what for what it's worth, I mean, you, you're, you're out here on this course, you're pounding the feet away, you know, you're doing the miles on the concrete, you're putting that pressure on the low back, things are going to get flared up. I mean, high rocks, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. I, I can see it in the comments right here. I see folks saying, oh, I, mean, I, would, I couldn't make it to that race, mental toughness. Yeah, it's all of those things, y'all. <laughs> this thing is hard. And these athletes are fast, and they are fit, and they have been training for this. This is a, a, I know I keep coming back to it, this is another one of those where you're turning around repeatedly and it, it just makes you think about having a little rest where you, you wouldn't otherwise, if it was a 50 metre length, you wouldn't be thinking about having a rest at that point, but now you've got to turn around uh, and, and, and get going again. And you, you have to be quite disciplined in, in your mindset with that. You know what's interesting too, Greg, and I'd love to get your opinion about this. The, when we're talking about the foot position on that lunge, you know, I, I clearly try to like move my front foot around as I'm lunging. You gotta activate certain muscles. We know that the 100 wall balls are coming up. We don't wanna start like any opportunity where we can cramp up or really overuse a certain muscle, you know, but uh, we're kind of seeing a similar pattern with each step on Lauren Weeks. Maybe she's just that fit. Is that she's, she's 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 going well, still. She's, she's moving well. Um, but but you're right. The, this is the, the end of this race is particularly brutal on, on the legs. Um, and then not to mention trying to run after doing 100 meters and lunges as well. But Laura's looking strong there if she comes out that one. This is it. She sees that finish line. I'm telling you, Lauren is. She's look at moving. maybe she maybe she was smiling right there <laughs> yeah. as she came out of there. I like seeing it. And there you are as Meg Jacoby now runs that, that course. This is where it's going to get exciting. I want you to strap in. If you got a seat belt on your seat right now at home, Greg and I are pulling our pants up. We're, <laughs> we're ready to go for 100 unbroken wall balls right after this next run. We're looking at this middle pack right there. Again, Alonzo Greenlee, Linda Byer. These are athletes that we've seen and thought would be a little bit tough, to, uh, higher in that, in that uh, pecking order right now. And look at that, Lauren. And, and, and you could argue that this is the same pace she started at, Greg. I know. <laughs> she, she, she's moving really well. I've heard Hunter talking about Lauren. He was like, if there's one person in the world that I don't want chasing me down, it's Lauren Weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, she's living in Utah. She, yeah, I mean, she, she runs a ton. She's obviously, like I said, you know, the we haven't seen her a lot, you know, this season so far in at High Rocks, but certainly has been at a lot of competitions. So we uh, we know she's out there. We know she's rocking. And here we go, Bell McFarland on what I think is her last length of the sandbag lunges. So we're coming up to the wall balls. In Maastricht, when they were against each other, uh, Lauren, Lauren beat Megan on the wall balls by 10 seconds. That's right, looking at some of these comments right here. See the times again. If you're looking for times, just like we are, we're looking right here. Greg's my my man. He's on the, he's on HighRocks.com, where you can go to find all the latest times. You can get, see up to date, uh, you know, stats and splits and everything like this. So head over there. So that's Bellwout. Bellwout is out on the final run in, in third place. So she's she's doing really really well. With yeah, I, I'm just I'm so pleased with Bell's performance right now. This is this just makes me very very happy to see her come out and you know I we, we see it in the states I, I mean you talk to her after these races she's excited as, as we brought up in earlier in the show 
you know, this is a place where she's found home, and I, yeah, you, you really, ooh, as we see Vivian Tafudo. There we go. Running down the lane. This is also very important for you to, at home with this new standard, with how the the, the the shapes out here. These athletes must stay in their lane. That gives the athletes, no matter where you finish and where you come into each of these rock zones, an equal advantage to that course. So, no matter what, it's all about race. It's all about equality. It's all about balance. And this is actually interesting. I'm I'm, I'm curious if this helps Bell's split times right here chasing down Lauren. Yeah, yeah. Getting that toe, like you said, you know. There's Becky Mason now. So Biola's out in fourth place. Oh my goodness. How is that? Oh, uh, we're excited. I'm seeing right out here in front of us right now, uh, you know, we've got our judges ready to go. I wish we could spin the camera around. We will be in just a second, but take a moment right here, High Rocks fans. Look at the stands behind these athletes. Incredible to watch. Over 5,000 spectators and athletes on site here today in Manchester, making this the greatest, the biggest High Rocks event that we've had. Or World Champion, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. London was bigger, but here we go. The, for a world championship event, we've seen nothing like this in a could be in a more beautiful place. No, no. So we've got five. We've got five ladies out of the out of the lunches now. First three Americans: Lauren, Megan, Bell, and then they're followed by Viola and Becky Mason. So Becky's like still in that fifth spot. She'll be really pleased with how this is going. And right here in front of us, Greg, we're about to see the leader, the former world champion, about to take it over here again. Lauren Weeks takes it to the wall balls. What a great shot you have right here as we go into 100 reps. Now, I want to see you guys blowing this chat up right now. I want to see you cheering Lauren on and all these athletes. This is where it gets exciting. This is where we see the new standard, Greg, in which let's... 100 wall balls unbroken is now the new standard. What is that? <laughs> This, this become like yeah, the accepted thing for some of these top ladies in this sport to do 100 wall balls unbroken. It's amazing. At this stage in the race, yep. well, not 100 wall balls unbroken fresh in the gym, 100 wall balls when you're like an hour into this brutal race. Meg is a, as a competitor right now. I wonder what's going through her head. She looks calm. She looks like she's focused. I wonder if it's eating at her. I wonder if she's still playing the game. She knows Lauren is only a few reps ahead of her. I, I really feel like this is going to be a spot where, where Meg just like puts the hammer down and just grinds into it. If she doesn't fight as hard as she can right now, it's Lauren's game. Because Lauren, if you look at her face right now, this is the Lauren, I've known Lauren for a long time. This is where she is just dominant. When it comes down to the hard mental grind, yep, I'll bet on Lauren any day. Megan's just got to be thinking, I've just got to do these unbroken, do all I can at this point and just hope Lauren breaks. Yep. If she breaks, like, she's back in it. That's right. Here we go as these athletes are making their way through. We're going to see our judges pop it up. Lauren at 50 reps. Meg at 30 reps. Halfway done. But look at that. I'm watching out here with Lauren Weeks. And she drops that ball. We saw her make a slight bobble. She was kind of getting a little bit shaky. I guarantee her legs are ready to fall off. I, I know it. And Meg looks solid. Bounce at the bottom. That bounce is what we want to see at the bottom. We want to see that hip crease go below the knee. Heels are down. That that good spring out of the bottom. 100 unbroken. This is Meg. And Bell enters the mix right here. A 1-2-3 American podium could be. Unless the wheels fall off. Exciting work right here. More and more of these athletes are going to be popping in. We've got the next one up will be Viola. See if she can do this. As Lauren takes another break. I can't believe this. We are so close. And Meg, just like I thought, what just like what I thought, you look at her face, she is locked in. She's seen the break. She'll see that, yeah. Yep. She'll see that. I've already encouraged her. She's like, I thought that she won't break this. Oh, it's getting exciting in here as everyone turns their cameras. Let's go.
bless it. And there we are. Lauren Weeks takes it right there. Unofficial time. Oh my goodness, Lauren Weeks, the current unofficial at this point, but still, Lauren Weeks, the new world champion, the new returning world champion of fitness. Incredible, Lauren. And there is Meg Jacoby crossing the finish line, the second American to cross, second place, earning her spot on the top of the podium. Oh man, there must have been some drama. You can hear Lauren apologizing to Meg right here as they're kind of popping in. This is what's so exciting. This camaraderie and this family, this is what it's all about right here at High Rocks. Belle McFarland could be the third one across the finish line. We will know shortly as Vivian. Viola, Vivian drops the ball. Viola hangs on to it. And your girl, Rebecca Mason, the hometown hero, She's As these girls do a little bacon sizzle on the on the stage right here. It's just fun to watch y'all. Welcome in. This is the conclusion of the women's Elite 15 race right here in Manchester, England. Chris, Chris Glass and come in at seventh place into the wall balls as well. So she's, she's, yeah. she's performing really well. Love it. She's moving up. I like seeing that. And there is Bell, drops the ball, but she's got it. She's gonna make it happen. She's nearly there. Oh, I'd love to be a fly on the wall right there. I wanna know what they're talking about. I wanna know what happened on the course. She came in apologizing. Yeah. That's, that's kind of Lauren, but I, I, don't, I didn't see any infractions or any sort of interference. That's right, <laughs> the shiz. That's right, old reliable weeks. <laughs> you are exactly right. She is reliable and she is amazing. Yes, and nice Belle bell. McFarlane, a newcomer, one of the newest of new <laughs> to the sport, has now taken the third place spot. I cannot believe what I'm seeing today. I guess I can. I mean, I knew I knew when she came out for first time. I stopped her after the race and I said, "Who are you?" I was like, "What is? What, where did you just come from, right here?" Yeah, incredible, incredible work right there. One, two, three for the Americans. Again, unofficial till we get the call, but it's looking like that's what it is. An American sweep. American sweep, you called it, you called it. And I've got to say with Bell as well, I think she was seven or eight fastest qualifier into this race. First time on the grid, third race, like you said. She's had to travel, we talked about jet lag and all these things, but she's shown up. Oh man, I'm loving this. I am absolutely loving this right now. We've got the full balance of the ladies here at the wall ball station. So fun to watch. Vivian next up maybe, or is it gonna be Viola? We don't know right now, we're watching. And Lauren Weeks coming off the stage right here in front of us. We love seeing it. So, so cool. Give it up for All-American Podium. That's right, Rick Stein. That's right, that's right, that's right. Again, excited out there in Twitch land, y'all. Where can you see your times? It is right on HighRocks.com. Greg's got you covered. We're calling the race live right here from Manchester. Yeah, the beats are rolling with the DJ. DJ, coach the DJ is out here spinning records from the Red Bull booth. As we watch right here, Vivian and Viola crossing nearly at the same time. Everybody's hitting the deck right here in front of us here at the booth. So I think that's Paul Fifth coming in with Vivian and uh, Viola there. Well done. You, you got a comment right here. I'm going to send you over here in just a second. But we've got a comment come in. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? All-American. It said it was like the old reliable weeks. That's right, baby. Good job. All right, get over there.
I shouldn't have been able to do that. So. But you did. And I don't know how. <laughs> so. Talk me through the strategy coming in, because obviously you know what Meg can do. She set that incredible world record last year. I mean, just in terms of pacing yourself, knowing that that could exist, how did you approach it? Well, um, Meg is the better athlete. Like, I'm going to say that straightforward. She's 100% the better athlete. It just happened to work in my favor today. But um, she deserves the win, uh, absolutely. I know you guys had a bit of a chat at the finish line. I don't think we quite saw why or what. I think it, we just very much respect each other. We're like... Two women fighting hard, both have kids. Hers is, she has different challenges because she has to take them to like all these different practices. I'm in like the new mom stage. So it's just she's somebody I look up to and trying to see how she does it all because those years are to come for me. Both of you to stand out and, and do what you do out on that floor. I mean, yourself as a very new mom, Meg as a mom. Do you know what you're doing for all the other females in this space who perhaps are nervous about trying something like this, what would be your advice to them? I mean, I hope it's a positive uh, an outlook and not like something negative. So just go out there, have fun and, and try it. Like what's the worst that could happen? World Championships perhaps. <laughs> now you came to um, the farmer's carries and traditionally that might've been an area where we saw Meg gain a little bit ground, but mentally, girl, you dug in. What did that take? Um, I, I think that was actually maybe a little bit of strategy on my part. I went slower on the row than I normally do, so I think I just came into it with more energy. Um, that's, I mean, that was it. Like, I just went slower on the row, the station before. Amazing. Was there at any point did you think, oh, I've got this? Never. Like, not, no. <laughs> no. Because I'm always getting caught in the back half, so I have to just, like, I just have to grind and hope for the best. How tough were those final few reps of wall balls? I thought I was going to fall over. <laughs> so hard. Yeah. Now, how are you going to go celebrate after this? Because, you know, it's the most incredible achievement. I'm going to watch the boys race. <laughs> yeah. Have you got your money on anyone? <sighs> no, I mean, I, I think I'm, uh, my pick is somebody that nobody else is picking. I'm rooting for Dylan. I think, I think he can do it. New, brand new dad. Those are my cards. <laughs> We we'll love it. Well, ladies and gentlemen at home, Lauren Weeks, three-time world champion and your 2023 High Rocks world champion. What a woman. Go and enjoy tonight. Thank you so much. Sorry, I'm sweaty. <laughs> so cool. So cool to see that, Greg. I'm telling you, again, my friend, so proud of you. So proud of you. Hopefully Anthony was watching at home. We, we love it. We love it. <laughs> love that. This was so much fun to watch. Great job. I got so many questions. We'll talk about it later. Go enjoy. Go enjoy. So that was Lauren Weeks right there. Oh, she knew she had to stay ahead. She knew she had to. She, she, I, I love. I love how when Lauren asked her, you know, like, uh, you know, what, like, you know, about Meg Jacoby, she said she's just a better athlete. I mean, what? How humbling, but also like, how scary. To know that that person is behind yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you got to outrun that person yeah. the whole way through. And you can't let up. You, yeah, you, you no. know, you, you're struggling, you're an hour, you're like 50 minutes in, 55 minutes in, and you know she's coming for you. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we're watching some of these athletes right here kind of close it out. We've got Ancha. And Jezebel. And Jezebel. So exciting again, as you just watched Meg. Jacoby takes second behind Lauren Weeks. Bell McFarlane third. Greg, let's run through the times. Pardon? Let's run through the top five times. So uh, I am still waiting on Lauren's time. Uh, with Megan Jacoby, Megan was 60 minutes and 23 seconds. So uh, Lauren must have been around the hour mark. I'm not 100% sure on what that was yet. Uh, Bell McFarlane was in 102.11. Vivian Tafuto in 104.05. Uh, Viola Oberlander just two seconds behind Vivian there. 59. Oh my goodness. Lauren Weeks goes sub one hour. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The, we broke the internet. <laughs> we, broke, <laughs> we broke the High Rocks leaderboard. We didn't even talk about that. Oh my gosh. Second, second woman to ever go under an hour. But like I said many times, the greed is slow. 
four laps is slow and Lauren's gone under an hour on this slow, slow course. Um, yeah, that's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. That, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm dumbfounded right now. Uh, again, when Lauren Weeks, only a couple of years ago, 2021, when she went 105 or 10, yeah, and, and that, I was like in tears, weeping, like, you know, just like, oh my God, we're going to see this happen. And now she goes sub one hour after having a baby only a few <laughs> months ago. What is this? Give it up to all the moms out there hustling, grinding. We love you. This is what you can do. <laughs> this is this is what we talked about the support. We talked about the community. You know, you've got Angie here on the wall walls, and she's surrounded by all the other women like pulling her through. This, I, I love seeing things like this. Yeah, this is this is what it is. We are a family. This camaraderie right here. It's what we see week in and week out. Each each time we go to a new city, you know, yeah. we see that family kind of rise up. New bonds are made. And again. The gym community, it's, it's, it's not just the athletes, it's these gym communities, it's these cities moving together, kind of coming together and working through this. And we see this down to the last competitor each and every weekend. We see this cheering, we see this hype. This is what it's all about right there. Little shout out for Andrew as well here, who until I think around uh, less than a week ago didn't even know she'd be in this race. So she's essentially here because um, because Michaela pulled out because she wasn't able to race it. Actually didn't even, you know, she hasn't been able to train for it and peak for it like everyone else knowing that they were here. Exactly. And let's run through it again. I'm, I'm just seeing this right now. One hour 23 for Meg Jacoby. I mean, what can you say? It's, I, I'm just so, I'm so blasted, like so stoked to see this women's field. And again, Bell McFarland, oh my gosh. Only a couple races in, smashing her previous PR, getting closer and closer to that one hour mark. This is how fast this sport is evolving. Oh, massively. And and, and, then, and then Vivian as well in full. So, so Vivian, I think, was, uh, I think Vivian was the 10th fastest qualifier coming into this race. Um, but like I said, she's been steadily improving her times over, over the season, over the years. Um, I think she was fifth in the North American Championships uh, when the lineup wasn't as strong as it is today. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and she's turned up and she's done full. So, yeah, amazing, amazing result for her. Viola, fifth. Uh, like we, we said, she's been in, around the school for a couple of years. She always performs. She's been struggling with COVID to a certain extent. Uh, and she's turned up and got fifth. 12 seconds. 12 seconds will be taken off Megan's time due to a sled issues at the pool. Interesting. And we're going to dive into that. We just got some information into the booth right here. 12 seconds off Megan's time. I think that'll still keep her under in the hour. Yeah, in the in the one hour mark. So she'll yeah. still stay under 101. But that's interesting. We're going to dive into a little bit more about that. Maybe in the uh, during the men's show, we'll get some more of the uh, of the information on that one. But yeah, curious to see what happened there. And yeah, we're watching in some of these comments right here. Sportsmanship at High Rocks cannot be beat. You're exactly right. That's what it's all about. Sportswomanship. I love it. Pure athletes. I love that you guys are commenting in here. You're keeping it positive, keeping it stoked. That's what it's all about. The High Rocks World Championship right here in Manchester. I, I, I mean, what a women's race we've seen so far. That was that was exceptional. I mean, just, you know? just awesome. Uh, uh, yeah, the, 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 the stand of athletes that we've just seen is so sky high. Um, you can probably only appreciate it if you've done one of these races and like put yourself through that. Um, but what we've just seen them do is incredible. Well done. Yeah.